I always hear about parallels of Christianity with the Matrix film. Neo is the one, much like Jesus is the Messiah. Neo dies and resurrects afterwards, much like Jesus. But I've often wondered about other religions, especially Eastern ones. My argument in this video is that the first Matrix film is most similar to a form of Buddhism called Abhidharma Buddhism. It's also very akin to Christianity in many ways, but I think the film most relates to this form of Buddhism known as Abhidharma Buddhism, which I will be going over. Now, before diving into the Abhidharma tradition of Buddhism, I wanted to go over a question that is commonly asked, which is, what is Buddhism? A philosophy or a religion? In Asia, it's predominantly a religion. I say that because many Asian Buddhists believe in things like reincarnation or rebirth, karma, and that the Buddha has supernatural powers. However, in the West, we commonly think of Buddhism as atheist. That's because many Western Buddhists try to focus more on the philosophical aspects of Buddhism, such as its ethics or mindfulness meditation practices, but not on its various religious teachings. So finally, what is Abhidharma Buddhism? Well, it's a broad tradition that focused heavily on how to explain the Buddha's teachings philosophically, such as karma, rebirth, and the non-existence of a soul. Now that last teaching sounds very counterintuitive. How can rebirth happen if there is no soul? This question may also raise us to ask, what even is a soul? In Indian religions, they define a soul as an unchanging substance that inhabits inside every conscious being. Buddhism denies this and says that no such soul exists. So then, if Buddhism believes that we are not souls, then how does rebirth happen? How do we go on from one life to another? It turns out that the Abhidharma explains this with a theory that all living beings' bodies are made up of atomic particles, while their minds consist of psychological functions and aggregates that produce memories, emotions, and so on. In the Abhidharma literature, these atoms and mental constituents are commonly referred to as dharmas. Additionally, many schools of Buddhism within the Abhidharma claim that only the dharmas exist, while the things we can see with our eyes do not exist. This sounds very strange, but take a look for yourself at this book reference. The world as conceived of in Abhidharma Buddhism now looks like this. Dharmas make up all that there is. Only dharmas, these building blocks of the world, really exist. Everything else, and this is especially true of collections of dharmas, such as persons and macroscopic objects, does not really exist. Can the Abhidharmas belief in only the dharmas existing actually make any sense though? It seems absurd to assert that only the constituent parts that make up everything are real, whereas the macroscopic objects we see do not. Plus, even if all objects are made of the same parts, then why do we see different things as looking unique to one another? Like a dog and a person, for example. However, the Abhidharma's picture of reality might make more sense than you initially think. Consider this picture on the computer screen. You see a girl with a dog and the two of them look totally different from each other. Also, they look as if they're real, almost like they're stuck inside the computer. But they aren't actually real. They're just different sequences of digital binary codes of zeros and ones causing different images to occur. Now if the image of the dog and the girl is actually just different sequences of the same things, the digital binary codes with ones and zeros just organized differently to create two different images, what if the same logic could be applied to the physical dog and the physical girl themselves that were photographed? In other words, what if the dog is just a certain sequence of atomic events, while the girl is a different sequence of the same atoms and atomic events? So what creates the perception of an actual dog is just one sequence of atomic events, while the perception of a girl is made of the same atomic events. But they are organized differently from the two to create what looks to be two completely different things macroscopically. If you are following this philosophical speculation, you may feel like Neo after he wakes up from the Matrix world into the real world. 
Obviously, the idea that the reality we experience is a physical illusion is similar to how Neo's life in the Matrix was a virtual dream. The apartment he owned, the car he drove, the place he went to work, all of that was unreal. Instead, everything Neo had and believed in was just a computer-generated lie. But what does Neo's waking up from the Matrix symbolize in Buddhist terms? Does it represent spiritual liberation, which is called nirvana in Buddhism, or something else? Personally, I don't think Neo's awakening is quite in line with the Buddha attaining nirvana yet, because when Neo wakes up, he's still not the one. Neo has to learn many things from Morpheus and others before he becomes the one. For me, Neo's first time outside the Matrix is more analogous to what inspired the Buddha to become spiritually enlightened. The story of the Buddha is that before he was the Buddha, he was just an ordinary person named Siddhartha Gautama. Before Siddhartha was born, his parents were told by a fortune teller that their son would either be a great political leader or a great spiritual leader. Since Siddhartha's father was a king, he wanted to do everything he could to ensure that Siddhartha would be a political leader. So his father tried to shield him from the hardships of life by spoiling him in his palace. In fact, according to the legend, Siddhartha didn't even know that death is a part of life until he was a young adult. So that's how far his father supposedly went to shelter him. When the Buddha eventually learns that death happens to everyone, he becomes inspired to go on a spiritual quest, hoping to find a remedy to the problem of death among other existential crises. To make a long story short, when Siddhartha Gautama finally becomes the Buddha, he teaches a doctrine known as the Four Noble Truths. One, life is a world of anxiety, unease, and ultimately suffering. Two, the cause of this unease is attachment. Three, the extinction of unease is gained by renouncing attachments. And four, the Noble Eightfold Path is the way to extinguish unease and attachments. The Eightfold Path being one, right view, two, right intention, three, right speech, four, right action, five, right livelihood, six, right effort, seven, right attention, eight, right cognition. This scene with Neo and the young boy bending the spoon, I would argue, has great Abhidharma implications. I assess that it strongly connects with the eighth step of the Noble Eightfold Path, which is right cognition. When Neo gestures to the boy with curiosity of how he bent the spoon by using his mind, the boy says to not try and bend the spoon because there is no spoon. I think this scene symbolizes the analogy I used earlier with a computer picture of digital codes being like the Abhidharma theory of objects being made out of atomic dharmas. It's tempting to think that the boy's claim of no spoon means that there is absolutely nothing there whatsoever. Although there is still actually a sequence of computer codes that make the image of the spoon inside the matrix. Therefore, when the boy says there is no spoon, I think he means that there is no spoon macroscopically speaking because it's just a sequence of digital codes making the illusion of a spoon. But this claim of no spoon is not an argument for complete nihilism either, the theory that nothing exists whatsoever. Nonetheless, it is not also a claim of absolute realism, the idea that everything we see in the matrix is literally real. Instead, it's a middle way between thinking nothing we see is real and everything we see is real, asserting that there is something there, but in a different way from how we normally perceive it. Abhidharma Buddhism is exactly like this, as it claims to be a middle way between eternalism and nihilism. However, for both the Abhidharma Buddhists and the people in the Matrix, knowing this truth of the things you see not being real in the way you perceive them is not enough. We see after Neo's first encounter with the Oracle that even though Neo knows the Matrix is a computer dream world, he is told that he is still not the one. Although, that is, he is not the one yet. The Oracle says something that gives a big clue to the scene we all know and love, when Neo resurrects after being shot by Agent Smith. 
When she says that Neo may be waiting on your next life, maybe, this seems to imply that Neo has to go through a death and rebirth process to become the one. In other words, Neo as he currently is has to die and be reborn as a new Neo. When Neo does die and gets reborn, we see that he has new abilities within the Matrix, such as controlling bullets being shot, flying, and interestingly, being able to see the digital codes of the Matrix world rather than their seemingly real but illusory projections. I think the ability to see the codes of the Matrix system is what makes Neo the one. That very ability to see the codes is what gives Neo the power to manipulate them, thus manipulating the macroscopic projections of the Matrix. In other words, Neo can stop bullets in midair or be an agent in a fistfight because he has control over the codes that make projections within the computer-generated dream of the Matrix. Even the agents do not have this ability and behave as if they are in a real world. Granted, the agents have more abilities, such as dodging bullets and punching people through walls, but they do not have the ability that Neo has to completely change the system altogether by changing its constituent codes. When drawing comparisons between Neo and the Buddha, it seems possible to infer that Neo's supernatural powers in the Matrix are like the Buddha's miraculous abilities in the world that are recorded as happening within the Buddhist scriptures. If Neo can make the system of the Matrix operate totally differently by fiddling with its codes, could the Buddha have control over the things in our world by manipulating their atomic dharmas, such as the Buddha's supposed ability to fly or heal people? It certainly seems possible and very logical, but the only thing is, it seems that in order for the Buddha to do this, he would have to be able to see the atomic dharmas, much like Neo can see the program codes in the Matrix. Now, can the Buddha see the atomic dharmas? For the longest time, I could not find anything in books that claimed Buddhists think this is possible. Instead, all of the books I read focus more on the historical side of Buddhism. Or even if they did focus on Buddhism philosophically, it wasn't as much in a theological sense. However, I finally found at least one source of an interview with a Buddhist monk from Myanmar who said the following to the interviewer. For those who do not attain jhana, a Pali word for meditative concentration, we also teach four elements meditation. And if they practice diligently, they too can see small particles. And when they see small particles, they can discern in the small particles the four elements, which are of solidity, liquidity, energy, and repulsiveness, or earth, water, uh, fire, and air. It would be better to have a direct source from the actual Abhidharma Buddhist literature that says someone can see the atomic dharmas through diligent meditation, but I have heard from other Buddhist study scholars that the Abhidharma literature does in fact say so. Nonetheless, I've never seen it for myself, but I imagine that it is somewhere in the philosophical texts of the Abhidharma. This supposed ability of the Buddha to see the atomic dharmas is also how the Abhidharma explains that we can overcome our attachments and desires and get rid of our unease and anxiety. This riddance of desire tends to confuse many people because it sounds so contradictory and counterintuitive to Buddhism's ideas on compassion. However, I think this is because many people do not understand the transcendental experiences one is supposed to achieve in Abhidharma Buddhism. It makes sense that it's impossible to overcome desire if one sees macroscopic reality as being the only perception of the world. But if we could see that everything is actually at the constituent level, made of the same atomic dharmas, then there would no longer be craving for the various things we see. We wouldn't be attached or even detached to the things that surround us, but rather be non-attached to them. This may be confusing, so I think an example will help. Consider the pictures of these two women. Some may think the woman with the crown is attractive due to being younger, while the other woman with the sunglasses is less attractive because she is older. This is a natural response, and it seems to be the only reaction possible when we look at these pictures. Although, believe it or not, the women in these pictures are not even real. 
These two pictures are computer-generated codes to create realistic-looking faces from a website called This Person Does Not Exist. The fact that technology has gotten so good that it can create seemingly real faces is eerie to me. It seems like a manipulative strategy for advertising to get people attracted to others that don't even exist in the first place. In actuality, these two pictures are more like this image of just binary computer codes of ones and zeros. When we see the binary codes of the zeros and ones, we immediately feel non-attachment. We don't feel attached or detached to them, like we might if we were to look at a picture of a person's face. The point of this thought experiment is that things in our computer screen can seem perfectly real when they in fact are not. Perhaps it is similar in real life with the things we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Some may still be confused about how this non-attachment principle in Abhidharma Buddhism can lead to greater compassion. So here's another example. Here you see two dogs, a blue healer with a deformity and a rottweiler with a regular body. Many people would feel an automatic attraction to the rottweiler while feeling repulsion to the blue healer because one is normal while the other is different. However, this doesn't actually make much sense, especially since blue healers are much nicer in character than Rottweilers. Yet we still feel more attachment to the Rottweiler because we think it looks better. In fact, we tend to judge others more by their appearance and physical qualities rather than their character traits, even in romantic relationships. This can be a real obstacle for many people as they can get attracted to people solely for their physical looks even if these people have terrible character flaws. Yet at the same time, they are not attracted to other people just because they give them less stimulation with their physical looks, even if they are compassionate, kind, and great partners. The goal in Abhidharma Buddhism is to get rid of this bias based on looks and judge others by their character. If we can see physical reality at the atomic level of the dharmas, then we can avoid this prejudice altogether and instead love others for who they are and not what they are or how they look. We can see how the Abhidharma has connections with the plot of the Matrix film, such as the atomism and the digital coding of the Matrix system. Just as the Buddha is able to overcome fear, anxiety, lust, and other emotions one can feel when encountering others, Neo is able to do this as well with the agents and other enemies within the Matrix. I've also been thinking about how it makes sense why monastics and forms of Buddhism influenced by the Abhidharma do not marry, as they are aspiring to come to the ability to see the dharmas themselves. Not all Buddhists agree with this physical picture of reality, that just the atomic dharmas exist as it is claimed in Abhidharma theology though. There are Buddhists from a tradition called Mahayana that argue for a different sort of philosophy on reality, and the Mahayanas are generally more open to those who are married still being able to achieve enlightenment while remaining in love. I think we get a glimpse of this in The Matrix with Neo and his relationship with Trinity. In fact, in The Matrix sequel, Neo is confronted with a choice to either save some people to restart the human community of Zion before the Matrix system crashes, or to save his romantic love, Trinity, but risk everyone else in Zion dying. I think The Matrix sequels point a lot to Mahayana Buddhism. But I will save that video and analysis for another time. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some interesting philosophical discussion. Until next time.